Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and today we're going to be talking about the Maurice Cole Reverse V Alpha Twin. Uh, this is another board that we worked on with Maurice, uh, and it's in addition to the Reverse V collaboration lineup. And uh, from where you're looking at, like if you're on your phone, your computer, your couch, this looks like a big twin pin. And it is a big board that's a twin fin and has a pintail, but it's not a big twin pin. So what we were looking to do with this board is to make a longer reverse V twin pin. But if you keep going longer and bigger and thicker, like the, bo the board will just boat out and you won't, you know, unless you're like a 350 pound human, you won't be able to surf it properly. So the Alpha Twin is made to be able to ride it in the longer lengths. So basically compared to a reverse V twin pin, this board is longer, narrower, and thinner compared to that board. It's basically a more leaned out, foiled out, thinned out version of the uh, twin pin. So when you get it into the larger sizes, it's not just uh, for Sasquatch surfers. And then as far as like what we, what we were thinking in our heads, as far as like, hey, what, what's this board gonna work in? We actually just wanted it to work in everything. We wanted it to work in small waves, uh, to still work in small waves, not necessarily like a tiny wave specialist, but if you had it and that's all you had, it would still work. Like it would still catch a lot of waves and glide and like be super fun to surf and like trim and rip some turns on. Uh, but then also as the surf got like kind of into the medium range and into the bigger range, it just keeps working. And then when it gets into the really big range, it's kind of like all that works. Um, when you're all your other boards are just kind of drifting around in the current and not really working this thing This thing is great like on those uh, bigger days as well And then the other thing that we thought would be great is if there was a board for people that wanted to have a board with longboard paddle, but They never nose ride and so if you think about the people like if you think about all the people riding Longboards, so not just the Joel Tudors and, and the people that are, are actually like riding them well and utilizing the nose on almost every wave. But if you think about all the people that just ride longboards for the paddle power, the majority of the time they're not using the nose. And the nose is holding up the paddling, it's holding up the wave catching, and it, a lot of times it's pole vaulting the surfer over the front when that bigger nose catches. And we thought also like conceptualizing this board that that would be a good market for it as well is just something that had the paddle power of a longboard but didn't have the big nose and a lot of the things that the people aren't using uh, for longboard and also just just something that just straight up look cooler than a, a longboard for those people as well you know something they can get excited about rather than being like oh shoot i gotta ride a longboard because that's all i can catch waves on so hey let's talk about the uh the performance actually let's talk about the bottom and the channels in the back talk about the twin fins these are uh Maurice Cole NVS G10 twin fins, and you can see it's a more upright shape on the fin. And this is what I was riding in the board basically through the entire range of waves, like teeny tiny all the way to way overhead. And then also channel bottom out the back, uh, which is what we have on the reverse V twin pin, the diamond twin, uh, that same channel bottom going out the back of the board. All right, let's talk about performance. So. Tiny waves. Uh, first couple sessions were like tiny lighthouse and uh, like in between first and second jetty. Um, there was a mix of like really good shortboarders that could make a shortboard work in tiny waves and then also like a bunch of people on longboards. I actually thought it was going to be too small for this thing, uh, but it actually kind of surprised me. Got in really easy, uh, got good speed going down the line. I, I didn't really need any more fin than what was in there. and just worked really well and just like the glide and the trim, it, you know, basically it just felt like a really powerful mid-length, but not too much bulk or thickness. Like it, it just felt like neutral in the water, but fast and, and like good on rail and good through the turns. Even there was even like Cape Hatteras, like it ceases to surprise me like how small the wave can be and still barrel. I mean, like we get like high barreling waves. It's, it's insane. And so like trying to get into these little mini tubes with this thing was a lot of fun. And, uh, just a really cool like all around performance like for the bottom of the barrel like mini gravel stuff. Uh, you know, from there, like, you know, the session, we had a few more sessions like that, but also had like some better wave sessions, like a, had a really fun session at the lighthouse that was like Thanksgiving morning that was kind of chest to head high and super fun in that. Um, you know, you find yourself being able to take off 
further outside and deeper on the board just because you can get into the wave a lot earlier and get set up so if you're not used to like riding a super tiny board and taking off onto the lip it like it just makes it a lot more easy to get into those bigger faster moving waves and uh and get in the right position for some uh tube time on it and the uh and then also the board still you know at those higher speeds still will lay into a, a good turn like at the end part of the wave like when you if there's a section where it's slowing down and you can wrap it uh back into the pocket we've also had like some outer bar sessions like some second and third bar sessions uh like down in frisco and hatteras and that's where like having the the longer length is really going to pay off as well like i would say like at the bottom end like in the super small stuff and the super big stuff is where you really want to have that uh that longer length where, where it stands out from some of the other like kind of more mid-sized boards and uh in in that wave it was um it had plenty of paddle power uh, you could also, you could use this as like uh, under, like for people out there that are, want to have something that's more fun and like more performance than their guns, and they're looking for something like underneath a gun, this would be a really good board to put in that slot in your quiver. Um, and that's why like mine is an 8.7. I kind of chose it like for that and just like, you know, to be able to use it in the tiny waves all the way up to the big stuff. But, but I think for under a gun, it's a really... It's a cool board because, you know, once you start riding a lot of nine and 10 footers, like you get used to that length and you get used to the size of the board. And then you go back to the tiny stuff and it just feels weird. Like where something like this will feel good in that slot in your quiver. So in the bigger ways, plenty of paddle power, but still uh, because of the narrower width and the, and the thinner, way thinner rail, the way that Maurice steps down the rail, um, it, you know, me at 200 pounds, like I could still put this thing underwater enough to, I mean, I'm, Driving at like a six two, but I mean I can duck dive it to get out. Like I'm not I'm not at the point where I have to turtle it. Like you can actually put it underneath the water to get out, and that I think is a big difference. Like if you're using it as a longboard replacement, that's also a big difference between this board and a longboard. Is that like when you first put that nose down to go into a duck dive, having the narrower nose allows you to get the nose deeper and then put the board down underneath. Whereas if you have a big wide longboard nose, uh, it, it's only going down so far and then that's kind of the, the depth of your, uh, of your duck dive. So small waves, medium waves, bigger waves, um, that kind of sums up the performance. I mean, talking about the overall design of the board, it's got a lot of the same characteristics that you'll see in like kind of shaping elements you'll see in like the whole reverse V lineup. It's got that beaked nose that's not only beaked on the nose, but then it's also beaked on the rail. So there's actually like a hard, like almost like a defined elbow in the shape right here, going the whole way around the perimeter of the nose. The rails are really foiled down. And with all of the reverse Vs, that, that's been a big part of uh, the performance is keeping the rails really thin. And twin, twin fin with a winger pintail and then the channels at the bottom. Just a super fun all around you know, just performance surfboard. It's the only way, you know, really to kind of say it. And it, uh, it kind of works in everything. And, uh, and so far, everybody that I've loaned this thing to, I mean, everybody that I've loaned it to has ended up getting one, which is, that's kind of a good litmus test. But, you know, whether it be Byron Sewell or Corey Laramo or Ryan Leopold, all, all these people, like, they try it, and they're like, dude, I got to get one of those things. Like, and a lot of these people hadn't even written, written a board like this style, but then when they, once they can surf it and kind of see the benefits of it, they're like, I, I got to get one of those things. And I, I just think, I don't know, like, just the, uh, the longboard replacement is, is huge because there's so many people that, like, kind of are, that's what works best for them uh, as far as the paddle and the wave count. It, like, puts them in a happy place. And this will put them in a happier place because it, you're not towing around that big wide nose that you're not really using at all. You know, I mean, you can still cheater five this thing and get, you know, get five wrapped around the nose and like get forward on it. But if you think about how often most people are going to the nose that ride longboards, it's not really that often. I mean, the pros are going to the nose all the time, but the average recreational surfer that has to ride it because of paddle power is hardly ever going to the nose. Uh, dimensions on this board, uh, is 8.7, 21 and a half, 2 and 7 eighths. This was the very first one that we did. And then after that, um, and I, I would do this board again 100% of the time. Uh, the production ones, we did widen them out a little bit. We basically went a quarter inch wider on all of them just to get a little bit more outline curve and a little bit more turn in the smaller waves. 
And so uh, those are the 8.7 production would be, the stock one would be 8.7, 21 and three quarters, two and seven eighths. Yeah, the main thing is you just want to keep it thin. And so two and seven eighths is only on the stringer. You can see like how far down the rails really pull down and just foil out. And that it's just going to make the board a lot easier to get up on edge. That and the reverse V bottom, uh, which also really helps on the on the takeoffs are gonna make the board a lot easier to get up on rail. And then, you know, going back to that longboard example, you know, the biggest thing with people riding longboards, again, because th they want the longboard for the paddle uh, and the wave count is a lot of times it's just fitting that board into the wave. Like, you know, you'll see, you see, see they'll catch a wave and then they can't get the thing on rail, so they're going straight and then that big nose catches and then it's just over the front. And so the combination of the reverse V bottom which as soon as that thing hits, it wants to go on rail. And then with that narrower nose compared to a longboard, both of those things really help. I mean, basically redirect from going straight at the beach to going down the line. And it just makes it an easier board to surf and a more fun board to surf if you're not riding the nose all the time. Interesting side story. I was at one of the more popular, if not the most popular, point breaks in California. And I didn't have this board, but I had an 8.9. So it's basically the same board, but in an 8.9. And I was out surfing and someone paddled out on a longboard and proceeded to get a lot of waves, not take their turn, and they got it absolutely handed to them by the old salt of the lineup. And they got ripped about riding a longboard and why are you riding a longboard here? And it's just, this is not a longboard spot. You get out of here, go home. Like it was like, well, it was like basically like a flashback. It was basically like being back to the eighties as far as like just the ripping that this, this guy got. And he was catching a lot of waves, but you know, again, like not really using the nose or it was more again, like, Hey, I'm using this thing for the, uh, for the length, not like for, for the design of the board, you know, for the length and the paddle power. And, uh, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on the eight, nine, which, you know, if I'm sitting on it, I'm kind of, I'm just sitting on it upside down because I don't want to get wax on my butt. So I'm sitting on this thing, right? It doesn't look like a long board. I mean, it's a long board, but it doesn't look like a long board. And so it looks like a longer mid length, like an eight, eight foot mid length or something like that, right? So anyway, so the, the old saw paddles up next to me and then proceeds to like continue to go off about that guy riding a long board in the break when I'm basically riding a long board. <laughs> but the moral of the story being is that if you have a nose like this, it's, it's more socially acceptable, you know? And so I told Maurice that story, he got a, a, just a hoot of a laugh out of it. Um, Cause then this thing, I mean, this thing was catching a ton of waves, but again, like it, it's just, it's just more fun to ride. And if you're not using the nose, why have that big nose? It's just holding you back. Speed round on the Maurice Cole Reverse V Alpha Twin. Is it a long board? No. Is it a longer board? Yes. Is it a glider in the big sizes? Yes. Is it good for tubes? Yes. Is it slippery like a twin fin? Definitely not. Super positive <laughs> off the tail. Like G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip with the twins and the, uh, and the channels. Probably one of the most confident holding boards you'll ever surf this and the, and the uh, reverse V twin pin. But things that are not debatable are the airbrush. So, hey, I wanna throw out a, uh, a huge round of applause and thanks, praise and respect for Anto for doing this uh, crazy airbrush on this board. It is, I told him to go nuts. Is basically that was, I just said, hey, go nuts. And this is, this is what he did. I don't know how many hours or days this took, but this definitely qualifies as officially nuts, if we're still allowed to say that. But I think I am because I'm off the mainland in unincorporated Dare County, so I can kind of say whatever I want. So Anto, you are the man. Thank you very much. And, uh, <clears throat> This definitely qualifies as going nuts. So if you want us to go nuts on your custom, we can get you there. It's the Alpha Twin from Maurice Cole. It's available 7.7 up to 10.1 and uh, in six inch increments off the rack. And then we can also write up custom orders as well. And again, uh, easiest way to think about this board is it is a leaned out, foiled out reverse V twin pen. So if you're looking at like a 7.7 of this versus a 7.7 twin pin, the 7.7 twin pin is gonna be wider and thicker compared to the Alpha Twin. 
Any questions? Or if you'd like to place an order for the Maurice Cole Reverse V Alpha Twin, you can give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.